The Passover Seder is really a very striking moment in the Jewish calendar. And it's also very familiar to us. The prayers and the declarations, the questions and the answers, the stories and the scripture at the Passover table, we remember these stories since we're children. These stories are so well known, the prayers, the thoughts, the history, the telling over the things we do, we eat, are so familiar to us that sometimes we might not stop and think about them because they're too familiar. And, and being too familiar to us could be a, a hindrance in a sense like the children's stories that we grew up with, the lullaby stories that we were we heard as kids. This, this, the music was nice, but the words rhyme, but sometimes we never stop to think about what we're saying. And if we thought about Rockabye Baby and what does that mean, it, we, we might scratch it. Wow, I never even thought about that. And that's likely to happen at a Passover Seder. It's a night pregnant with rituals, far more than any other festival, any other moment on the Jewish calendar. We do things that we never do. And they're very odd, they're very striking, and they're supposed to not only elicit within us a certain behavior, but a way of thinking, and what could that possibly be? I would submit to you that, in fact, that what we're doing at the Passover Seder is completely paradoxical. We famously hold up a, a matzah, hol lach ma'anya, three Aramaic words. This is the poor man's bread. It reminds us of a lot, of slaves in Egypt suddenly given freedom, burst out of an opening in our homes. The time was so short, God had to bring us out of Egypt so quickly, Exodus 12, the, the dough didn't have a, t a chance to rise properly. It never sat still, and that's how you make bread. You let it sit and it, it rises up. It didn't have that chance. The poor man's bread. Okay, I understand that. The mora, the bitter herbs we eat on a Passover at the Passover Seder. Well, that's to remember Vayamoru es Chayehem and their lives were embittered. We understand that. We're to remember the pain, the sadness of a past that should be ever present in our minds today. Well, I understand that. The dipping in salt water, salt water, the salt water is to remind us of Tears, tears that our, our nation wept while enslaved in Egypt for centuries. That also makes sense. We, we have this mixture of nuts and cinnamon and grape juice and pieces of apple. It's mixed all together, little pieces, and it sort of becomes like a, like a mortar. It's really quite tasty, and it, it sort of offsets the the bitterness of the mora of the bitter herbs, but it, its texture is one that would help us recall the bricks, the mortar, the building, the slavery, a very bitter past, a very difficult time in history. But if that's what the Passover Seder were alone, it would be a consistent evening, but it isn't. It's anything but that. Because at the Passover Seder, we're engaging in all sorts of behaviors and eating things in a way that only can elicit within our minds thoughts of complete freedom. People who don't have a worry or care in the world, certainly characteristic of someone who's very free. Poor men and slaves don't dip. Reclining, who reclines? Leaning to the left. Some Jews lie on so, like sofas and just or lay out on pillows, and who eats that way? Not slaves. These are behaviors that are only practiced by the rich, by more than rich, by, by those who are free. If a slave is fortunate enough to get his hands on a, on a piece of meat, maybe a, a lamb shank, he, 
he devours it. He he devours it completely. He he breaks the bone with his teeth, cracks it open, sucks out all the marrow. A free man doesn't break the bone of the lamb. No need to do that. There's plenty of food now. We're free. We're therefore forbidden to break the bone of the lamb. Well, which is it? Are we to be reminded in a very striking way to think about bitterness and pain and the slavery and the lack of freedom? Or is it freedom that we're supposed to be contemplating on this very striking evening, filled with sections and steps and stages? Which is it? Well, as it turns out, It could be said that it would be very difficult to really appreciate freedom without first enduring slavery, without first enduring bitterness. There are people who grew up in very wealthy homes. Families are billionaires. They grew up often not even knowing their families very well because some of the the children of the super-rich very often are raised by nannies and don't have that kind of intimate relationship with their parents as they might. They certainly, their, their appreciation for freedom is, can't be as great as a person who's endured the pain, endured the suffering, endured the poverty and slavery, and now becomes free. As it turns out, the Torah is our guide. We, we live ba- based on the, the teachings of of the greatest men and women who ever lived, the prophets. Commandments are in the Torah. They're called mitzvot. They guide us in not only how to behave, but how to think. As it turns out, there are quite a few commandments, mitzvot, in the Torah, hundreds of them. The commandment that is found more frequently in the Torah than any other, by far, is the commandment to be kind to the stranger to be kind to the gear, to not abuse the gear, the stranger, the weakest members of society, the people who might not even have a family. We are told by the Torah, because you too were strangers in Egypt. You too were once slaves. And because of that experience, something is expected of you. If we're going to produce a people that would rise up to be a a light to the nations, an or lagoyim, Isaiah 49, verse 6. You had to have gone through the experience of slavery and servitude, or else it's, or else it's impossible to appreciate what freedom really means. That's why we thank God for freeing us. We, we might wonder why do we even thank God for the freedom. After all, he put us in that predicament to begin with. If someone ties you up and then releases you, would you then thank them? Well, as it turns out, HaKosh put us in that predicament. We survived it, and as a result of it, we are called upon to be a greater nation. So it's only by experiencing the difficulty of the poor man's bread, thinking about that, the moro, the bitter herbs, the salt, water, the tears, the haroses, that mortar-looking food. It's only if you can recall that then you're able to appreciate what freedom really means. There was this loaf of bread, beautiful, big, puffed-up bread that walked over to a matzah. You can imagine that bread was very proud, big, beautiful, shiny, puffy, tasty, tasty. The matzah. The loaf of bread looks at that pathetic matzah and you can imagine says, look at you. What are you? You're thin. There's nothing new, just a cracker. Taste? Very simple. But look at me. Look at how beautiful I am. Look how, how tasty I am. Look how shiny I am. Look at me. The monster thought for a moment and replied, It's true. But let's get back together in a week from now and see what our predicament will be like. 
Let's get back together in a month from now. What will you look like? In a year? A week later, the bread is completely stale. As time goes on, the, the bread becomes moldy and essentially disappears into nothing. The matzah, on the other hand, is there. It's permanent. The God of Israel made a promise, an eternal covenant with the nation of Israel. It is true that the nations of the world, they mock us. It's not just now, but in every generation, nations rose up to destroy us and taunted us. Look at your predicament spread throughout the world. And look at us. But we have a God. It's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And the God of Israel made a promise. And if you bow before the God of Israel, nothing is impossible. And he'll never change his mind. They got Netzach Israel, Lo Yishakir. The glory of Israel will not lie. Ki huli nachem. He's not a man that he would change his mind. First Samuel 15, verse 29. It's not going to change. Oh yeah, the nations of the world with their glorious religions and buildings and edifices and power for a time look very, very attractive, very appealing, very mighty and shiny and puffed up, and they mock the matzah. But the matzah remains, and that loaf of bread disappears. May Hashem guide you, protect you, watch over you. On behalf of all the people who enjoy our teachings here at Outreach Judaism, friends and supporters, I want to wish you a safe, healthy, uplifting Passover a time that's filled with redemption and may we see the coming of the final great redemption quickly in our time. Happy Passover. Adon olam,